Aloha, it's Robert Stelic with Blue Planet Surf. Today's video is going to be all about choosing the best foil for your needs, how to um, evaluate a foil. So everything I say in this in this video is basically from my own experience. I've been foiling for several years now. I've tried lots of different equipment and also from talking to other foilers. And lately I've also been listening to podcasts. So if you really want to geek out about foil design, check out the Progression Project Foiling Series podcasts. Um, some really good stuff in there as well by Eric Antonsen. It's August 2019, just to give you a reference. And you know, foiling's been around for a few years now, so there are a lot of designs out there. A lot of foil companies, like including ourselves, came out with their second or third generation of foils already. So there's been a lot of R&D and development going on, and uh, definitely the equipment's getting better, the designs are getting better, it's getting easier to use. So take advantage of all the technology that's out there. I'm gonna start first talking about the different foil designs, and then I'm gonna get into the construction of the foils. Our first generation foil is the Easy Foiler. We tried to design this to make it foiling as easy as possible. And so it has a relatively thick foil design that makes it a little bit easier to um, control the angle of attack. Having a thicker foil creates more lift at lower speeds, has a little bit more drag, but it's easier to control and easier to learn on. Also having a relatively flat foil makes it a little bit more stable, which also helps with stability and making it easier to learn. Some newer foil designs, including this F4 foil, have a little bit of a thinner profile. So have, having a thinner foil is a little bit faster, has less drag basically, but it's also a little bit more sensitive to the angle of attack and it, it wants to go a little bit faster. So the control takes a little bit more skill. So the thinner foils are great for a little bit more advanced riders. So let's talk a little bit about the wing shapes. Um, the high aspect means that um, the, the wing is like narrower, longer, wider. So our bigger wings are a little bit more high aspect than our smaller wings. Um, because we just want a little bit more efficiency from a bigger wing. An extreme example of a high aspect wing is a glider plane. If you think of a glider plane with really long, slender, thin profile wings that are completely flat, <clears throat> that's the most high aspect wing shape. Basically it has the least amount of drag for the maximum amount of surface area and the maximum amount of lift that you can get out of that surface area. So that allows you to fly very efficiently uh, with low drag and and good control at higher speeds. The downside is it takes a little bit more skill to control a high aspect wing and also it's, it drops off a little bit earlier at lower speeds. So a low aspect wing will have a little bit more lift at lower speeds while a high aspect wing has better control at higher speeds. So wing shapes that are kind of more wide this way and kind of stubby smaller uh, not as wide are called lo low aspect. So low aspect wings have more control at lower speeds. These kind of foils are easier to learn on, a little bit easier in the surf. They don't kind of outrun the wave and when you're turning it's um, a little bit easier to control. So low aspect versus high aspect, something to consider. So the, the curvature of the wing is important too. A wing that's um, completely flat, like I was talking about the high aspect, uh, well, all, the whole wing generates lift. Uh, if you turn the wings down a little bit or have a curve to it, obviously this tip here doesn't create upward lift anymore because it's not, it's not um, flat, it's curved down, so the, it doesn't create a lot of lift going upward. So you do give up a little bit of efficiency with this curve. The advantage of having a curved um, tip is it actually makes the foil easier to um, engage into a turn. So a flat surface will be more stable, a flat wing will be more stable versus um, that curve kind of allows you to kind of go into turns a little bit easier. It does, it's not as directional, it wants to kind of go into turns actually. So for carving and so on, having a kind of a curved wing makes it a little bit easier. Uh, sometimes the, uh, a flat wing will have a tendency to kind of want to slide sideways a little bit, it's not as directional. So these wings are kind of almost a little bit like the tips are a little bit like fins on a board that give you a little bit of directional stability. Same with these little wings in the back. I find that having a little bit of curved tips gives you a little bit more directional stability, which helps with 
you know, keeping the foil in control and flying straight. That said, some of the new high aspect wings, you know, my friend Derek Hama has some high aspect wings and he's, a, he's an amazing surfer. He, he can make that thing surf like crazy. So just because somebody's using a high aspect wing doesn't mean you can't surf it. It just takes a little bit different style. I'll post some pictures of Derek Hama surfing his high aspect wing and it's pretty amazing. And they're very efficient. So for downwind foiling and so on, having the high aspect wings is de definitely makes sense. Another consideration when you're shopping for foils in the design is the angle of incidence, like basically the angle of the foil to the fuselage and the mass. Usually the mass and the fuselage have a 90 degree angle and then the way it's mounted on your board can play a different suit in how much angle you have. But it's like the built-in angle of your front wing and your tail wing. Basically the, the front wing is usually angled slightly up. It's like somewhere between zero and two degrees of um, angle. The, the back wing is angled down slightly. So, and you can change the angle of incidence um, to reduce or increase lift. Basically, the more this is angled up and the more the back wing is angled down, the more the difference between these two angles, the more lift the foil is gonna create at the same wing size. So, and by reducing the angles, it, it in increases control at higher speeds. Be basically, it's easier to control the angle of attack at higher speeds. So depending on the use, um, the angles are very important. And then probably the most important thing to consider is the wing size. So the surface area of the front wing. This one here is the Carver 1580. So that's this, the surface area of the front wing. And, um, and that also interplays with the surface area of the back wing. So usually if you have a bigger front wing, you also want a bigger back wing. Obviously the more surface area you have, the more lift the foil is gonna create. So a bigger wing is good for a heavier rider or if someone wanting to use it in, in smaller waves or slower moving conditions. Like for example, in, a down, in downwind foiling, you need a much bigger wing than if you're using it on big fast waves, then you would want a small wing. So. Um, so the important considerations are the, the speed of the waves and also your, the rider weight when you're choosing a wing. Other design considerations are the uh, length of the fuselage. So that means basically the distance between the front wing and the back wing, um, the, you know, the weight distribution of, or the distance between the front wing and the mass and the tail wing, those things, and then also the length of the mass. So all these things um, make a difference. Like basically a shorter fuselage will be a little bit harder to control, like up and down. Um, like, especially when you're a beginner, it's easier to have a longer fuselage because it makes it easier to control the foil, um, easier to control the height of the altitude of your foil versus a shorter fuselage that's a lot more sensitive. But the advantage of having a shorter fuselage, it, it, it gives, allows you to turn tighter, make tighter turns and also it's a little bit easier to pump and so on. So for more highly skilled riders, using a shorter fuselage can have some advantages. Usually when you're starting out, having a longer fuselage is an advantage. This is one of the Armstrong foils. These are really nice, well-designed foils. Um, the Armstrong foil is also a great surfing foil. It has a little bit of a thicker um, profile. It has a curved wing, which is nice for turning, carving, and um, they have several different fuselage lengths available. This is one of the relatively longer ones, but they also have shorter ones, so you can adjust the length of the fuselage. Um, you can also, they have different shims in the back, so you can adjust the angle of the back wing, which is a nice option to um, either increase or decrease the lift, amount of lift it creates. If you're using it at higher speeds, you can reduce the angle, or if you're using it at lower speed and you want more lift, you can increase the angle of the back wing, which is kind of a nice option. In terms of design, the Armstrong foil has a tapered mass, which is pretty unique. Having a narrower base, basically, it's almost kind of like a fin. When you're going fast, a wider base can have um, a little bit, it's kind of like a big fin that wants to go straight. So by having a narrower base, makes it a little bit more maneuverable. The downside of having a narrower mass is that it has more torsional twists. So another thing to consider is the mass length. A shorter mass will generally be easier to manage. It's better for beginners. You don't crash as far down. It's more stable, um, easier to control. 
um, and you can do shorter, quicker pumping motions, and also you can catch the energy of the wave a little bit easier with a shorter mast. A longer mast, sometimes your foil will be so deep underwater when you're catching the wave that it doesn't catch as much wave energy. So on, on small waves, it might be difficult to use a really long mast because you don't catch as much wave energy um, in the deeper water. Also, once you're up on the foil, it's more tippy. You have to fly it higher um, to have less drag. Basically, a longer mast also has more drag. But um, the advantages are you have more clearance, so you, at higher speeds, it's nice to have a longer mast. Also, if you're leaning it into turns or you're doing you know, high-performance foiling, um, especially like at higher speeds like towing in, uh, longer mass is definitely an advantage. Um, you don't have to worry about the takeoff, and then at higher speeds, you got more control. So our system comes with two different mast lengths. The standard is 26 inches, and then we also have a 30-inch mast, and then by adding on a plate mount adapter, you can also add another 2.5 inches to either one of those lengths. So um, having different ma mast lengths available makes the system more versatile. So next I'm going to talk a little bit about the construction. So different options in the construction are generally speaking aluminum parts, and usually the mast and the fuselage are made of aluminum. Pretty much all, all wings are made out of um, basically molded carbon fiber with a um, foam core inside. So um, the least expensive foils are usually made with aluminum mast and fuselage. This is our rock solid foil. Um, it's, you know, it's $600 and you can get it for half price if you're buying it with a board. Um, it's a simple foil but it's strong. Uh, the aluminum is generally a little bit heavier but it's a strong material. Um, one of the downsides of using aluminum, when you have dissimilar metals like stainless steel screws going into aluminum combined with salt water, that causes corrosion. So the only way you can make sure that your foil doesn't corrode is by taking everything apart every time you use it. You can also put in anti-seize between the screws and the aluminum that kind of prevents it from touching and corroding in between keeping out the salt water but eventually you will have some corrosion. So make sure if you have an aluminum mast and fuselage to wash them regularly, keep them clean, use anti-seize and so on. This is a F4 foil. Um, this one has a really wide base, which makes the mast more stiff. So aluminum mast with a wide base have a lot of torsional rigidity, which is nice. Um, it helps with controlling the foil. And then um, the, this fuselage is also aluminum. It's machined very nicely. Everything's well designed. But the downside of aluminum is the corrosion issue, especially, and it's also a little bit heavier than a full carbon foil. Um, in terms of construction, there's different ways to attach the front wing to the fuselage, front and back wing. This one, you can see it has um, three screws holding the wing into the fuselage. So this is a nice way to connect it together. It's fairly simple to fit the fitting. Um, it's fairly easy to fit them together. Um, but one of the downsides is if, if the screws loosen up slightly and they're not really tight, this, this wing can start to wobble. And then when it wobbles, the whole foil gets very unstable and much harder to use. So it's important to always make sure these are very tight in there because um, otherwise any kind of movement in the front wing is, is always an issue. The other attachment option and the way we do it, or also go foil and Armstrong foil to, to a degree, is where the, the foil slides onto the fuselage and has a kind of a tight fit. This is a tight connection even without the screws being tightened. So right now I got a tight connection, there's no, no wiggle, no movement. And then so basically these screws are just to hold everything together in place. In terms of safety, I highly recommend uh, checking the edges of your foil, especially the trailing edges of your wings and your mast. Uh, some of the aluminum masts come out of the mold super sharp, and if they're not um, 
not sanded at the factory, I would highly recommend taking some sandpaper to the edge of the mast, especially the trailing edge. It really doesn't make that much of a difference if it's rounded off a little bit and it's much safer. So definitely make sure you don't have any sharp edges on your foil. It's pretty easy to sand them off. Start with rougher grit sandpaper first and then work your way to finer sandpaper and maybe finish it off with like a 600 or 800 wet sandpaper. Some wings will also hum at higher speeds. So usually that um, there's some kind of vibration going on in the foil at higher speeds. So um, one way you can remove the humming is by sand usually sanding the trailing edges as well. So, um, you know, it's both safer and you can uh, sometimes get rid of the humming noise. Obviously also the front edge of the foil and the mast should be as rounded as possible. You don't, especially on the front edge, you want, don't want any sharp edges because if you um, run over yourself or run into someone else by accident or hit the reef or whatever, you don't want a sharp edge, especially in the front. It's a little bit less likely that you'll hit the trailing edge, but even the trailing edge, you want to have it uh, nice and safe and not, not too sharp. So a really important um, connection point is the connection from the, the front wing through the fuselage to the mask. So all the, all the forces are translated from your feet basically on the board, through the board, through the box, through the mask, through the fuselage into the front wing. So we found this con connection point here is, has to be really strong um, and stiff too, you know, because you don't want a lot of play or um, flex in this area. So what we did is we designed this um, titanium metal piece that goes basically inside here. So the mast connects to the titanium plate and then that connects to the front wing. And then obviously um, these screws go through this piece um, into the titanium. So this has a really solid strong connection between the front wing and the mast. And by using titanium, uh, titanium is inert, so it will not corrode in salt water, unlike aluminum or even stainless steel has some corrosion. Um, one advantage of titanium is it's, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't corrode in salt water. So um, anything we put inside the fuselage now is titanium. Also for the back wing, the connection is titanium. So that really increases the strength. Um, and that just having everything stiff and tight reduces the amount of movement um, between the foil. Like it's a direct translation of whatever you're doing on top to the foil. So you don't want a lot of twisting and uh, bending going on in, in the foil or anywhere between the foil and your feet. When you mount the foil to your board, you want to check and make sure everything's tight, like wiggle your foil up and down. Make sure this that it doesn't twist a lot. It doesn't bend side to side. There's no wiggling going on anywhere. You want everything to be really nice and tight and, and stiff and, and a secure connection. Otherwise, you're going to be struggling if there's any kind of movement or any looseness in the, in the foil itself or in the connection between the foil and the board. Everything needs to be really tight and solid. So the Armstrong foils are excellent design. It has a solid titanium connection all the way through. Um, I have a longer video where I interview Army Armstrong and he talks about the details of the Armstrong foil constructions. I have a little link up above right now if you want to click on that. You can watch that interview as well where I go uh, into the construction, how this is made, how the parts go together, um, how the mast fits and the um, you know, plate mount, different options. So this is a really nice foil. It's also uh, fairly lightweight. So one thing to consider when you're buying a, a wing system is that the modular system being able to adapt it, being able to use it for many different uses. So uh, for the new carver foils, we have five different size, wing sizes. So you can buy one mast and fuselage setup and then add more wings as you, as you progress or you wanna use it for different things. You have, we have a bigger wing for downwind foiling. We have a really small uh, wing for lighter riders or bigger surf and everything in between. So it has a lot of, we have a lot of options and it's basically upgradable and something to keep in mind also when in the future if we design different wings it's modular you can use the same system for for different wings so the same thing is true for, with the armstrong foils they have four different wing sizes available so we have like the this one here is the 800 we have the 1200 1600 and then the 2400 so we, that's the surface area and square centimeters of the wing the front wing so having different wings available definitely makes 
this whole system more um, more versatile and you're able to use it for different things. So instead of investing a, in a whole new foil set, you can just buy an additional wing and you have a lot of options. So by making the wing modular and, and being able to detach the mass from the fuselage and the front, the front and back wings is that it makes a much smaller package. So when you take everything apart, for example, the Armstrong foil, the whole foil fits into this little bag. So it's easy to travel with, you know, easy to break down and put away. So uh, having that is definitely an advantage. That said though, you wanna keep in mind that every connection basically adds a little bit of weight and creates a point of flex and so on. So every time you add a joint, um, you do give up a little bit of performance and potentially. So that's why some companies like Lift Foil, for example, they make a foil that's all one piece. The wing, the fuselage, and the tail are all made in one piece in one solid mold. And the only place it connects is the mass going into the fuselage. So you can still take the mass off the fuselage, um, but everything else is one piece. So there's only basically one attachment point instead of three. The upside of that is basically less flex, lighter weight, less points of failure potentially. The, the downside of the one piece of construction obviously is that it takes up a lot more space. You know, if this is all one piece, it takes up a lot more space than if you can disassemble it. Okay, so I hope that helps you make a decision, you know, on what kind of foil to look for. There's definitely differences between surf foils, downwind foils, and uh, you know, if you want to do behind a boat, things like that, there's different foils. And obviously for kiting, that's a whole different thing, uh, much higher speeds or windsurfing. So, but for surf foils, uh, it kind of went over the basics. So I hope it helps you uh, have some idea on what to get. If you're a beginner, you need something different than a very ad advanced rider. Don't think that you can just buy one foil and it's gonna be good for everything for the rest of your life. Most guys that got into foiling own several foils or several, at least several wing sizes for different conditions. It's kind of, instead of having a quiver of boards, you now have a quiver of wings and different, different wings for different conditions. So that, yeah, I hope that helps you find the right one for you. Thanks for watching, aloha.